let me introduce the first, our keynote speaker today, and uh, she is really the voice that's been at the forefront. The first public official I'd heard really talking about climate change, and this was 90s, right? In the late 90s, mid to late 90s, and then even in the 80s, she used to do stories with this. So our keynote speaker today is from Senator Lauren Lagarde, and I'm going to call her on stage. First, let me tell you, so we've seen her on, on, um, on the screen at the Senate for a very long time, but what many of you may not know is what she was like in 1986. Yes, I know that. So she came, she, she had started um, Pep Talk, Pep Talk, which became Inside Story. So she started as a journalist and then moved on. She's a three-term senator putting climate change really at the center of her legislative focus. And in doing that has helped author some of the best laws that we have around the world. That's been acknowledged by global experts on this. But a law is only as good as its implementation. A law is only as good as our ability to understand it, to figure out why it's important. So let me call up on stage Senator Lauren Lagarde, I'm going to just ask her one or two questions before I give her the stage, right? Lauren, thank you for coming up. Thank you. So, Lauren, you know, I remember having this conversation with you when, when I was saying, you know, when, when I was saying, you know, why, why care about climate change? Why were you at the, why did you start talking about climate change when no one the, was talking about it? In the 80s. It? Yeah. People didn't even know how to spell it or how, what it actually meant. A very good question, and thank you, and good morning, Maria. And everybody should be happy and uh, inspired this morning because there are institutions like Rappler that cares. And I'm glad that you mentioned the word care because everyone should care about us, about our community, about our society, our country, our planet, and our people and our future and the next generations. You're correct. Why should we care? Because if we don't care, another ondoy will happen, where plastics will be in the esteros and canals, where after a few hours of rain, incessant rains will bring about unnecessary floods if we implemented the ecological solid waste management law. Why should we care? We should care because our children, our brothers, our sisters, ourselves will be affected by the ill effects on health if there are open garbage dump sites which is outlawed under Republic Act 9003. Why should we care? Because there is a Clean Air Act that should be implemented by now where fumes should not be emitted by any moving vehicle or by even industrial sources, even by coal plants and incidentally, there will be, hopefully not, thousands upon thousands of megawatts of new power supply agreements of coal that Rappler and all of those present here should oppose, which is being heard now in the lower house of Congress. I know I have friends, even perhaps one of the owners of this company, I'm not sure, who could be affected by what I'm saying. But there is a Clean Air Act, and we are talking about cheap, clean energy for our people, but let me go beyond that because this is not an energy conference. Why should we care? We should, be, we should care because our forests are continuously being denuded because we are the victims, not only of Ondoy, Sendong, Pablo, Yolanda, of continuous adverse effects of the natural hazards exacerbated or turbocharged by climate change. We should care because it is our life, it is our planet. These are resources which are not forever going to be there. These are resources uh, which are only lent to us that we owe to preserve as stewards of nature. Why should we care? Because it is not ours, it's lent to us. For that and many more reasons, we should care about the environment. We should care about building codes, whether this building or the buildings where we live or built by government, public infrastructure, even the private sector. 
must observe the building code. And we, legislators, must update the building code because it, it's a very, very old law. So for this and many more reasons, we should care. And perhaps I should say we should care because it's our life. And anyone who does not care doesn't deserve to live <laughs> because a human being must care. That's why we're called humans. We have sympathy, we have compassion, we have intellect. So we must care. And so, I'm a person who cares so much, and that's the reason why I'm so passionate. Well, this is, yeah. so part of what we've yeah. talked about over the years really yeah. is that yeah. it's over the years, right? And, and it's the over the years the and over the, the decades. The decades. Yes. All right. and, and the I guess my passion in the 80s is still the same. I thought it would go. My anger is even more because the laws that's are in place and they're not implementing it efficiently and effectively. So I will get yes. off stage. I, we will, I, I we will do. You can just do an interview type if no, you want. I, 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 I have my to, notes here on my phone. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Actually, what's, okay. what she has, I think, uh, what she'll tell us I about are things that... But I, I will not read it anymore. We, we have... The, the tip of the iceberg of what Lauren has been working on is only the first part, right? So the execution of it. How I'm long do I have? It. Because I can talk here till noontime or the whole day about my loss. Uh, uh, you, do you want me to talk about my loss? And there's eight. I'm talking about the Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Ecological Solid Waste Management Law, Environmental Education Awareness Act, People Survival Fund, Climate Change Act, Renewable Energy Law. Or maybe I should just talk to you about the adaptation measures, which was an output of the uh, conference recently here, the workshop on the least um, developed countries. Maybe that. You know what I'll to do? Operationalize. What I'll do is I will give you, you yeah. have 30 minutes? Is that it? 30 minutes? I'm going 30. Sige. Uh, okay. Na. <laughs> okay. Sige. okay. So sure. I will leave you the stage. Sure. The people in the audience are actually people who have a stake. They're either volunteers or they're Good. part of local government Good. officials. These people are the ones on the front line. They okay. care. They care. That's important. I like to speak before an audience that cares. If you ask me what my pet peeve is, people who don't care, institutions that don't care. And so when I visit an institution, this is not yet my speech, okay? And I see that the office or the comfort room has no at least two bins, then you don't care. Then you're not implementing RA9003. I want to see the CR of SM Aura and if they are impl implementing the ecological solid waste management law where you segregate waste at source, recycle, and compost. Go to my office. Attorney Rachel Herrera is here. Rachel, you're not prepared, but I will call you. How many trash bins do we have in our office? Come here. Your UP law. You're very good. Just tell them, then I will yes. go to my speech. Ma'am, we have five bins. Okay. Okay, one for food waste or nabubulok na tirang pagkain. Yes, and one for biodegradable, uh, recyclables, which is uh, plastic or bote, for paper, which can be recycled if the, the other side of the page can still be used, and then the residual or latak. That's five, ma'am. Tissue waste. Tissue waste in the CR, opo. Okay. Is this microphone good? Okay, that's fine. Mon Ilagan, did you do that in Kainta when you were mayor? <laughs> huh? You did that? Yes. Are you back mayor again? No, no. Okay, good. So it's scary to get me as your speaker because I can pick anyone in the audience. Who among the audience actually knows about Republic Act 9003 and segregates garbage at source, recycles, and composts? If no one knows, I won't get mad. Just after this, please recycle. Does the Climate Change Commission recycle? You're new. You just, hindi pa ako magagalit kung hindi pa alam. April ka pa lang. Where is the Climate Change Commission here? No, just yourself. Where are the three commissioners? Yes, they should be here. They should be here. Unfortunately, they don't seem to care. Why are they not here? Why are they not here? Wasn't the CCCOM invited? Wasn't one of the commissioners invited to speak? Yes, um, uh, the Climate Change Commission, uh, whoever was invited to speak should report to the Senate on Monday why they are not present here today. 
and why the UN Global Champion for Resilience, a three-term senator who was the chairman of the Committee on Finance, who is so busy and working till 1 a.m. last night, and my staff knows that, is here, even if I have an out-of-town trip, and I was only invited three days ago. And the commission is my favorite government agency because I created that by law from a dream, literally, in 2007, enacted into law in 2009. I worked hard to create the commission. Let not people who have no vision and competence and diligence destroy the commission I created. If they are lazy and sleeping on a Saturday morning, they can all resign, and you tell them I said that. And I think that whoever was invited, who was it? I, I don't know who was invited to speak for the commission, should have been here. Not that I look down on your competence. Very good that you're here. You're a new staff of the commission, and you come to me, and I will brief you on climate change. Maybe you know more than me. I will learn from you. But that is an example of institutions like Rappler that cares. The Climate Change Commission must care. The Senate office must care. And when I walk in the corridors of a Senate, and I see a candy wrapper there, ask them, even if sometimes I wear high heels when I'm there, I bend, even if it's sometimes painful in my back, to pick it up and show them that I care. When I see off my five bins, there's mixed ways. I know some people might say, she's so petty. Why is she getting upset over plastic mixed with tissue? I stop everything in the office and investigate who violated this. Petty? No. Because if my office cannot even implement Republic Act 9003, who am I to tell the 42,000 barangays of our country to implement the ecological solid waste management law? So I am so strict, painfully strict. But I am like that with myself. I am like that with my family. Even my 84-year-old nanai who violates my law yesterday did the same thing. Mga ulo ng hipon, may kasamang latak na plastic. I said, no, that goes to food waste and the plastic goes to latak residual. My nanai said, it wasn't me. I said, then if it's not you, nanai who? The cook? No, it's not her. What I'm saying is that I belabor the point because that's the way to do it. I'm not even in my speech. Where I was born, in Barangay Potrero in Malabon, we have informal settlers, binabaha kami, open dumps. Hiyang hiya na ako, kinausap ko ang kapitan. Kapitan Cheryl Nolasco. Kung mismo ang aking barangay, kung saan ako napanganak, ay hindi mapatupad ang aking batas, ano nang saysay ko bilang tatlong terminong senador? And I said, please implement my law. Ay, yes, Sen, we want to learn. Pinaturuan ko, hindi na mahabang kwento, six months, bahay-bahay, nanalo ng Clean and Green Award ng MMDA. So kaya, people can care. Just make them aware how to do it. People can change. May pag-asa ang pagbabago At hindi kailangan na marangya ang kapaligiran para maging malinis. Barangay Nyogan and Barangay Sikat. Nyogan is in Tagaytay, Sikat is in Alfonso. They care. They asked me how to do RA 9003. Again, bahay-bahay, tinuruan, lakbay aral, nagpupunta sa kanilang mga barangay to see how waste segregation. RA 9003 pala yan, ha? iba pa yung DRR na training. But what we're talking about today is DRR. Who can tell me in simple terms what disaster risk reduction is? What are we talking about in the Agos Summit on disaster preparedness? These are big words, buzzwords, discussed in Geneva, in the UNISDR, DRR. Does the victim of Ondoy and the families that continue to suffer from the 2013 Yolanda understand actually what DRR means? Climate Change Commission, what is your name? What is disaster risk reduction? Stand up here. What do you understand? You're a new staff. Uh, of, of, of uh, CCCOM. What is, uh, what is DRR? What does it stand for? What does it stand for and what does it mean to you?
that is how I interpret it. It's holistic. Before, during, and after. So, for example, during a disaster, um, we still have to be mindful of um, our kind of uh, the way that um, we use plastics, which will happen. For example, when we're distributing goods, we tend to put that in plastic bags, don't we? When we distribute them, we have to be aware of where that goes. Thank so, you. Actually, simply put, thank you. Disaster risk reduction, heavy words. Ibig sabihin yan, pag tayo ay naghanda, nababawasan natin ang kapahamakan. We reduce the risk when we are prepared. Who would not want that, right? Bakit hindi tayo maghanda para ang sakuna ay hindi kailangan mangyari or mababawasan man ang hagupit ng masasamang pangyayari pag tayo ay naghanda. Maari ba yon? Sabihin ng iba? Hmm, di maari yon. Yes, for every one dollar that you invest in DRR, you actually save up to seven dollars of losses. And that is scientifically based. You are correct. You're not incorrect. But um, I'll teach you about DRR more and about the marriage of or convergence of disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation and mitigation. It should not be one or the other. Pag tayo po ay naghahanda at alam natin ang pamamaraan ng paghahanda na pag-uusapan ko, hindi pa ako nagsimula ng speech ko, ay mababawasan ang masamang epekto ng sakuna na dulot ng pagbabago ng klima so what did I say? Tagalog yon, Filipino. When we invest in DRR, we reduce the risks of the adverse impacts of climate change. Clear? Magulo ba ako? Buzzwords? Okay. Diretso na tayo sa aking message. Ano ngayon ang mga bagay? What are the things that we must do, know, study, implement? Whether as students, media, government, lawmaker, researcher, policeman, waiter, rural worker, farmer, differently abled, woman, child, Mindanawan, Cordilleran. What are the areas of concern that we must know so that we adapt to our vulnerable nation of 100 plus million people, of 30 million hectares, of 822 coastal municipalities in the country. We are a vulnerable nation. Some surveys say top three, some top five, some top one, vulnerable nation. And we are set back by natural hazards, typhoons, which hit us 20 or more times a year. Typhoons pa lang yan. How about earthquakes, which are difficult to predict? Possibly not. What about volcanic eruptions? What about just incessant rains? And because we don't follow our solid waste management law, we immediately have floods. And because of over extraction of water, groundwater, this ground subsidence, mababa na ang lupa, and so mas madaling magbaha. So all of this put together, at the same time, continued illegal logging or logging per se, even in the Sierra Madre, which causes the floods downstream and in Marikina onwards. So many things put together provide the risk. Now, what should we know? Let me just start with examples of adaptation measures. Who knows what adaptation means? So that I can explain to you. Is there anyone who can tell me what adaptation? Climate change, can you, can you just explain in simple terms what does it mean to adapt? In, in simple terms, as for the word says, we have to adapt to the effects of climate change the effects of climate change, adapting to it. So you're using another word to describe it. 
Ibig no, sabihin, like okay, how can you explain it? Does anyone, ngayon, I like it when people say, I don't understand. That means you're listening. Does everyone in this room today, are we online? Yes. Oh, so they see my katarayan. Yes. That's okay, Maria? Yes, fine. So, does everyone present here today, does everyone online watching us, reading us, understand what adaptation is? I don't think so. So, are you, is it enough? Adaptation means that inaakma natin ang ating pamumuhay para ang epekto ng natural hazard ay hindi ganung kasama. Oh. Example, maginaw, magjacket, adaptation yun eh. Ito, maginaw. Actually, lahat ng malls dapat 25 degrees i-thermostat. Paki-thermostat po, makakatipid kayo. Sinong admin dito? Thermostat natin. The Senate, same. Malaking kasalanan. Ang lamig-lamig. Di ba? Below 20 degrees. Mali. Dapat 25 degrees para automatic thermostat makakatipid. I sleep without air conditioner. I have an aircon. I put it on 15 minutes. And then I have an electric fan facing the wall. Yun na lang. Tipid. At saka ang aking rooftop, kalahate solar panels, kalahate gulayan. At yung gulayan ko ay ginagawa ko ang aking organic compost galing sa food waste at mga dahon at mga twigs. San si Katrin yung staff kong nakatira sa akin? Nasaan ka? Raise your hand. Nanginginig niya sa takot, taga-Paway, Ilocos Norte. Totoo ba yung sinabi ko? nag invento ako. Ha? Masalita. Totoo po. Okay. Ha? Salita! May dila ka eh. Okay, nahihiya. She's new. I love to terrorize them. <laughs> I'm just kidding, huh? I'm not terror. I, I just like to, I'm like a teacher, right? Now, you know why? I had a teacher in UP MassCom in the 70s, wow, before you were born. She was a terror, Professor Evelyn David, but I love her. I got my discipline from her. <laughs> And I got a one in her class. But she was a terror. One-fourth of the class remained and two, three-fourths. Ang uh, tawag doon, nag-drop. Nag-drop, matirang matibay. <laughs> Ganon din ako sa opisina ko, matirang matibay. <laughs> but if you stay, you learn. So, adaptation. We do certain things, change our way of life, do alterations in our lives, in our offices, in the way we think, we do, we live, so we adapt. Example of an adaptation. And this was discussed with least developed countries, representatives, experts actually, who met in the Philippines recently in a national workshop sponsored by the UNDP for least developed countries. Example, multi-hazard early warning systems that reaches out to the last mile. Mahirap intindihin. But really, it's very simple. All our hazards can be announced early on. That's why we need early warning systems. What does it mean to say to the last mile? What does it mean multi-hazard early warning system? I'll read. Multi-hazard early warning systems and services, MHEWS, MUSE is a leading concept promoted by WMO, World Meteorological Organization, to ensure continuous life-saving services from hazard forecasting and early warning by the science agencies to individual actions in the household. Why, does it, why is it called last mile? Ibig sabihin lang, dapat simplihan nila ang language nila. Eh. It means to the communities, hanggang sa huli, hanggang sa kabundukan ng cordillera, hanggang sa jungles of holo. It should be communicated. I'll give an example. In St. Bernard, do you remember, was that 2000 in Southern Leyte? Who would remember that? 2006, right? St. Bernard in Southern Leyte, in Ginza Ugon. Why did that happen? Because at that time, 
I'm not certain whether we had early warning systems already. It, it's not yet in place. But if we had Project NOAA, if we had early warning systems in the barangay, in the municipality, in the province, if Pag-asa, which was already present then, funded by government, communicated that the rains would not stop all these hours, if not days, na lumalambot na ang lupa sa bundok, na maaring gumuho ang bundok sa eskwelahan, kung saan nagduturo ang mga guro at ilang uh, daang estudyante pinalikas dapat ng DRR, officer, pero bakit? Wala pa yung batas, si eh? Ginawa ko yung batas 2010 eh. Nangyari ito 2006. So, if there were early warning systems in place and the information of scientific experts in the central agency in Metro Manila was communicated early enough, not on time, kailangan early enough for them to be informed, then they would have left. Then, gumuho ang bundok, nag-soil erosion, nag-landslide, walang namatay. Maaring nasira yung skwelahan, yung mga bahay sa paan ng bundok, pero hindi namatay. See? Yan ang ibig sabihin ng early warning system. Why multi-hazard? Because phenomenally, today, the impact of hazards cascades with more intense impact. Buzzwords, mahirap intindihan? I'll explain. Example, 2013. Yan, buhay na kayong lahat dito, no? Everyone listening knows what I'm talking about. Yolanda. So, multi-hazard. It's not just one hazard. Who can tell me the hazards of Yolanda? Super strong wind. Right? Ano pa? Another hazard. Storm surge. Ang dahilan nun, hindi raw nila ilang ig sabihin ng storm surge. Ka-importante, communication. English, Filipino, Waray, Bisaya, lahat ng Filipino languages. It should be communicated clearly. So, wind, w storm surge, strong rains, landslide, and warm seas. Hindi na i-input yan warm seas. But these are all the multi-hazards in Hayan or Yolanda in November of 2013. That's why there should be a multi-hazard early warning system. Let's go to another country, Fukushima. There was an earthquake, a tsunami, and a man-made accident, which was the nuclear accident. So it's multi-hazard. There are probably, or there were probably warnings against a nuclear accident in Fukushima. However, they probably did not warn against pag may aksidente or when it is an earthquake, what happens after? Is there going to be a tsunami? Were there drills about that? So we cannot isolate one hazard and not take into consideration the other hazards and the impacts of that. So I mentioned about 2006 or 7 St. Bernard in Ginza Ugon. There was weak, long rains. Was there an earthquake in Ginza Ugon? There was no earthquake, but there was a landslide. Yes. 1990, perhaps there are children here or students who were not born. How many were not born in 1990? Raise your hand. Don't be, don't be shy. I, I would like to raise my hand. Yes, okay, 1990. I was already a practicing journalist, and Maria was senior to me, haha. -ha. No. <laughs> So in 1990, Mount Pinatubo, there was an eruption. But still, there was an ash fall, that's part of it, lahar. But there were rains, so multi-hazards. So this should be taken into consideration. So what am I trying to say? With this observed phenomenon, there is a need to integrate the expertise, the systems, and the services of various early warning agencies. Pag-asa for hydrometeorological risks, FIVOX for seismic risk, the DNR MGB Mines and Geosciences Bureau for landslide and geo, meaning land risk, and to establish an integrated, converged risk information system
for our country that facilitates effective early warning and risk communication to the people at risk. Because we may have the science and the agencies and the funding and the technical experts, but if it's not communicated in a language understood, understandable, clear to the vulnerable populations, to the last mile, so to speak, pinakadulo, ay may mamamatay. Second, adaptation measure. Capacity building of national experts. Ano mga ibig sabihin to? Capacity building. Ako in government, I always hear capacity building of all agencies. Sometimes I think pag capacity building, baka mamaya, ano lang yan, travel lang yan, puro pakain lang yan, ganon. Anyway, but it's not. It's important. Capacity building of national experts to strengthen and engage experts to serve local communities better. We have the experts. Let's build their capacity. They may be bright. They may be uh, graduates of all the scientific courses needed. It's not enough. You should be able to write it, to explain it, to communicate it, and to operationalize your language so that your population, who is the group that you should communicate to, must understand it and take action when they receive it earlier on in the early warning system. Now, so we're done with early warning. I think that's clear. Third, what's another adaptation measure? Rainwater catchment. Where do you see a country, Maria, that is an archipelago with 822 municipalities by the coast, 30 million hectares, numerous waterfalls, seas, bays, lakes, rivers, but it's always subject to drought, and the people, especially the poorest of the poor, always say, walang tubig on the tap, and have to line up for water, for washing, for cooking, for bathing. That's unconscionable for a country with so much water. And so, do you know that there is a 1989 law not my law, I was still in journalism then, where all barangays through the Department of Public Works and Highways and the DILG must create rainwater harvesters. Imagine if we just collect tubig ulan. Kung sasagipin natin ang tubig ulan, sa panahon na walang tubig, may tubig tayo. Or at least it can be used for flushes, to clean the car, vehicles, or to water your organic plants. When you think about it, why should you water your plants with water that is chlorinated, that is paid for? Sayang, di ba? Kaya ako, may rainwater harvester. Am I an engineer? No, I'm not. Am I an architect? No, I'm not. I built my own rainwater catchment. Far from perfect because it's Oido, but I harvest my water Yung alulud ng bahay, naglagay ako ng pipe, PVC, hanggang sa water catchment sa bandang pababa. So, kinokolekta. Tuwing may ulan ng saya-saya ko, sabi ko, oh, puno ba ang ating rainwater catchment? At yun ang ginagamit, pang tubig ng aking mga organic vegetables. So, that's important. As an adaptation measure for times that we don't have water or emergencies or even during times of drought. Ah... Uh, what was that area? Not Midsayap, Kidapawan. The Kidapawan clash could have been avoided if there were rainwater harvesters that were built in the barangay, in the town, in the areas where there was a need of water, and if, well, hybrid crops were given, but even just water, then it could have been avoided. Now, Para sulit naman ang punta niya rito ng Sabado. Pag uwi nyo, alamin nyo sa inyong barangay. Kung may lugar kayo sa bahay nyo. Kung wala, maski maliit na mga plastic containers, pwede yan rainwater harvester, pang tubig lang ng halaman. Kung wala kayong lugar na magtanim ng halaman, okay lang. Pwede rin sa mga recycled na bote, lata, plastic, 
ay magtanim ng maski anong halaman, maski na kangkong, maski na malunggay, maski na herb, pwedeng kainin, pwedeng ibenda, magandang tignan at nakakabuti. And so, another adaptation measure is seed banks. Ano ba yung seed banks? Hindi ba kasi, pag bumaha, ayan, wala na yung mga tanim. Pag drought, patay na ang mga tanim. Either way. So we must have seed banks. All of this I'm going to put in the budget in the General Appropriations Act so that it's institutionalized in a legislative measure. So we need these seed banks to preserve our indigenous trees. Maaring mawawala ang ating mga puno at ating mga halaman, hindi bale kung meron pang maaring itanim ng muli. Pero kung wala na at indigenous species pala yung ay nako, yung kaisa-isang balete tree, ay yung kaisa-isang Makuno. Makuno ba ang tawag doon? What is ironwood in Pilipino? Dabaw. Galing sa inyo. Alam nyo sa amin danaw. Makuno. Ask Estelle. Because her husband is from Butuan. Makuno. Ironwood. What I'm saying is that there could be indigenous species that can be wiped out by floods. Uprooted by earthquakes. So we must have a seedling bank to preserve indigenous trees and plants. Now, number five, my favorite mangroves, bakawan, ibat ibang species. That's part of the national greening program, but I think that they should rethink and we should do a performance audit of the NGP, of the DNR, to make sure that all coastal areas that are host to mangroves must look at the kind of mangroves and whether the mangroves were actually effective. But I love mangroves because the mangroves are not just beautiful, but as you know, they're the best seawall against tsunami, storm surge. And in areas in Haiyan, in Yolanda in 2013, where there were mangroves, there was less, less adverse impact on the communities. I believe that in San Francisco, in Camotes, there was zero casualty. I believe that mangroves. In certain areas in Leyte, where there were mangroves, kung walang nasalanta o walang namatay. But when there are no mangroves, obviously, the storm surge just goes shoot and wipes out the population and livelihood and structure and infrastructure. And so mangroves is so important for coastal protection. Beautiful, barricade against storm surge and tsunami, and bahay ng isda, just like corals. It's part of the whole marine ecosystem. Now, number six. After this, I'm going to ask all of you, without notes, to memorize, okay? <laughs> indigenous knowledge. What is indigenous knowledge? Voltaire. We know the answer. Yeah. Forest management efforts, yung mga katutubo na sustainable, um, hindi naninira ng kalikasan. And you can, and their practices can help uh, mitigate disast uh, disasters. Magaling. Rappler talaga. So, indigenous knowledge, ang kaalaman ng ating mga katutubo. And there are 80 or 100 ethno-linguistic groups. Who can tell me exact number? of ethno-linguistic groups in a country? Walang, 80, of, walang official number, pero uh -oh. around 200. Pero. Maybe 200. Uh, anyway, the marami. <laughs> ethno-linguistic groups in a country. So the indigenous knowledge, huwag nating babaliwalain. Yan ang yaman natin. Tayo mga Pilipino ang yaman-yaman eh. Natural resources, wealth of knowledge of agricultural, environmental knowledge on DRR. Nauna pa ang ating mga katutubo ang ating mangyan at aita at ang ating mga uh, bagobo at tiboli at lahat ng ating katutubo, ifugaw, tinggyan, all the bontok, all the, I can go on and on with all our IPs. They have indigenous knowledge for culture, for agriculture, for environment, that we should document. And I'm doing that. Um, I'm getting a copy of the book. Do we have the Karsuk book? 
Yeah, please. Did we bring? No. Try if there's in the car. Okay, kung de pahabol sa opisina kung san mabilis, so that they they can see what I did for the Cordillera SUCs where we documented indigenous knowledge in agriculture and environment. Now seven, rooftop gardens. Simple lang yan. Everyone does it. Sayang kung may rooftop kayo at kaya, kaya yung at nakakalamig pa ng panahon, no? So pweding may vertical agriculture, pweding may rooftop gardens. Hindi ko na kailangan paliwanag yan. Pero sana sa commercial establishments ginagawa na yan. So ang ginawa ko, nagtanim na ako sa aking malit na garden at sa rooftop. Sabi ko sa staff na nagtatanim yung gardener kum all over. Una, walang gana, palagi absent. Mula nung siya'y nagtanim, and organic ang kanyang tinanim. At sabi ko, siya at yung stay out kong kasambahay. Lahat ng inyong i-harvest araw-araw, talbos ng kamote, malunggay, kangkong, hmm, paborito ko yun, kung ano-ano pa, hindi ko kayo kailangan magbayad, ilista lang nyo para sa end ng buwan, alam natin, ilang gramo o kilo ang ating harvest sa ating maliit na gulayan sa backyard. Ganado. Dahil kakainin niya araw-araw eh. So, nakakatipid ng isang libo, dalawang libong piso sa kanilang pagtatanim. Roadside ditches. DA and DPWH should know this. As groundwater recharging and flood mitigation measure. Nakakita na ba kayo ng mga kalsada na walang kanal, na walang ditch? Baba, siyempre, common sense, dapat may daluyan ng tubig. Seawall construction. The seawall, cemento, kung hindi kaya ng mangroves. But I would prefer, where mangroves can thrive, that we have seawall construction, that we have mangroves to replace seawall construction. And of course, like what you're doing now, the practice of drills for preparedness and for response to save lives and to reduce losses to effective response and early recovery arrangements. So what did I say so far? Multi-hazard early warning systems and services, a comprehensive early warning system and services that communicate to the general public the risk and the impact forecast of natural hazards. The impact forecast, what does it mean? conveying to the public the probable scenarios on loss and damage from extreme weather, say they could respond or prepare and prepare accordingly. Climate projection or outlook, probabilistic approach, risk-based to local development planning. Ang nangyari sa Yolanda, hindi probabilistic ang kanilang pagbigay ng warning. May tsunami na ilang metro. Dapat sa bawat segundo, pagbagsak ng tsunami, sinabi na inland, ganito ang epekto. Kung sinabi ba sa kanila na ganitong kataas ang tsunami? At more or less, darating yan after ilang segundo. Pagbagsak niyan ay ilang metro or kilometro papasok. Dapat ganun ang warning. Then everyone by the coast or within the next area should have been forcibly relocated from their homes, then deaths could have been avoided or at least limited. But of course, everything in hindsight is easier said than done. I'm not saying I could have done it better, but it's always good to learn from hindsight, hindsight so that it does not happen again. Or if it does happen, there are less destruction and less loss of livelihood and less deaths. So community, household, and individual action responds to early warning based on understanding of risk and probable scenarios is actually gained if you get all this. I know I'm long already. Uh, did I control my 30 minutes? Yes, I'm done. So what did I do? First, I told you all the laws I authored. I didn't have to belabor the point and explain each law be because you can actually read that on the website. But what I gave you are just simple 10. Did I say 10? Were you listening? How many? 10. 10 adaptation measures that we can do in our daily lives. First, we should know them already. Second, 
government and the private sector should be doing this. But if we don't, then we should know it. Then we can operationalize it. Kaya pa natin himayin isa-isa yan. Maganda ang Rappler if Rappler can, can do an article of each and every one and probably do examples in local communities. Let's say, sino yung maganda yung early warning system? Sino magaling sa rooftop garden? Sino ang magaling construction of road with ditches to, so, so that this um, government projects are actually climate expenditure? Which reminds me, a um, few years ago, when I became vice chair of the Committee on Finance, along with the DBM, we agreed that the budget of the Philippine government will be climate tagged, and it's being done now. Apart from that, there are more than 50 special provisions in the annual General Appropriations Act where we have climate and environment provisions. Even the inventory and counting of biodiversity, flora and fauna in state universities and colleges is included in the GAA. Just the other day, I met with 111 um, state universities and colleges in their 50th anniversary. And I told them, are you counting your flowers and your plants and your uh, insects in your vicinities, in your state universities and colleges? That's just one of the many, many special provisions in the GAA. Why do I do it? Because I care. Why am I here today? Despite only three hours of sleep, jet lag pa ako, I came from an official trip. Because I care. Why did I belabor the point and tell you about the 10 adaptation measures which I hope Rappler can do a story on by getting communities which are models of resilience in so far as this 10. In fact, make my 10, 20, 30, 100. Give me more adaptation measures submitted to the Climate Change Commission, this young girl, and to my office, Attorney Rachel, so that we can have a book on adaptation so that we can be a country that's resilient despite the fact that we are a vulnerable nation. So with that, I thank you for being attentive, hopefully inspired, hopefully my words this morning will urge you to take urgent climate action. And while you're all climate warriors here, because the fact that you're here on a Saturday morning proves a point, I hope that this brief sharing today has made you realize the importance of caring for a healthy, resilient planet, the only one we have, the only planet we can call our home. Thank you. Wait, stay on. Lauren, one quick, a quick question. I know that uh, we've, we've got people, I know you also have to leave, but I know. So this, so this is the first time we've seen you. You obviously have all the information, but there is a hint of frustration and anger, and then oh, as yes, well. I'm always angry because if you're not angry, then you don't have passion. Okay. When you're passionate, you're angry. When you're angry, but it's righteous anger. It's not angry, angry, then do nothing. Okay. So if Sometimes you can I pretend I'm angry, so they're scared, so they listen, right? <laughs> <laughs> you listened, right? <laughs> um, so the last one is if we can each take one step in the audience watching, what would you like each of us to do? If we can take one step, everyone in the room and everyone watching on the live stream, what would you like each of us to do? I'll give this to you for your library, but I'm getting the other books. This is an example of adaptation and documentation of indigenous knowledge in the Cordillera. It's a beautiful book on agricultural and environmental practices of a different indigenous tribes of the Cordillera. I'm giving it to Rappler. And we have part two of this. And you can, you can reprint it in Rappler, uh, do stories on it. It's, it's yours. Yeah, it's, it's my work with the six state universities and colleges. And then your final call to action. What Tapos one na. person can do. Uh, what sorry. If every person ah. in this room can do one thing and everyone watching online ah. can do one thing, what would you like them Just to do? Just one or three, you choose one. Okay, go. <laughs> I said 10, eh. they can choose one of oh, the 10. The okay. okay, simple lang. Okay. Yung simple. Simple, simple oh, some, one step forward. Okay, ito. Maghiwalay ng basura sa nabubulok at hindi nabubulok. Pag uwi nyo sa inyong bahay, barangay, lugar, kung saan man, hindi baling napakaliit, ay ang food waste, hiwalayin nyo at pwede yan 
gawin organic compost, lagyan lang ng lupa at ng tuyong dahon. Kung wala kayong garden, okay lang yan. Sa inyong kapitbahay, ishare yon. Yung bote, lata, plastic, may bibili niyan, pwedeng ibenta, or let's say litro, putulin, gagawing paso at gagawing halaman. So, if you implement the 16-year-old law RA9003, January 2001 pa, ginawa ko yan, gawin naman nyo, sundin nyo. Okay. If you segregate waste at source, recycle, and compost. Did you show my pictures here that we prepared? While I was speaking, sana pinakita nyo yung PowerPoint ko. Hindi ko binasa kasi yung speech ko eh. Ah, pinakita nyo? Oh, sige. Nagkanda silang speech. Anyway, so segregate garbage at source, recycle and compost. Then, parang yun ang aking talent fee sa pagsasalita ko dito. Diba? Second, plant a tree. Trees. Indigenous Philippine trees. Maski saan? Eskwelahan, sa parke, barangay, Dali lang yun, di ba? Hmm. Third, magtayo ng water catchment. Hindi sa bahay nyo, sa barangay, kay kapitan, kay mayor. O, kung may boss ka, if you work in SMORA, Work and Climate Change Commission, you're in Bulwagan, meron bang water catchment doon, that's DNR property. Kailangan may water catchment. Minsan may bisitahin ko kayo doon kung nagkatrabaho kayo doon. Sige. So, uh, yun, water catchment, magtanim, at saka mag-segregate ng garbage to follow RA 9003. Yes, one question. That's fine. Opo. May I have your name, please? Yeah, I'm Ana Marie Fresnedi. Ana Marie Fresnedi. We met already. I know, you look familiar. Yeah, saan po kayo? Yes, uh, we, I was, uh, it was a real essay transaction that we met before. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Yesterday, I shared with the community the fact that on June 8th was the World Ocean Day. Yes. Yes. And I, I was, now that I know that she's uh, April lang pala, ngayon ko nalaman na she didn't give a reaction to that uh, sharing. <laughs> because Who is she? Uh, Rina. Why is she always being blamed? <laughs> no, I'm not blaming Let's her. blame the three commissioners who are not here. Uh, who not was supposed, may just know, na isa ko wala ang climate change, sino ang dapat nandito? Sa kanilang tatlo. Sino? She's not secretary acting. Yung commissioner. Who? Vernice. Why is she not here? Can you get her on the phone? I want to know. Uh, excuse. Dapat may excuse slip. No, there should be an excuse slip. Sick. Hindi, ganyan eh, di ba? Excuse slip. Bakit absent? Mahalaga eh. Kung may commitment ka, kung may passion ka, may sakit, masakit ang tiyan, namatay ba ang pusa, aso, ano? Nasiraan, na flat tire. I mean, sanay na ako sa mga dahilan ng mga tao, di ba? Sorry, I'm online, ha? people say me because I'm really like this. Naiinis ako pag walang commitment ng mga tao. Pero kung may private na dahilan, napespetuhin ko. Gusto ko lang malaman, pag absent. Kasi mahalaga to eh. Si Maria, tinawagan ako. Maski na out of town ako, ini inayos ko schedule ko. Climate change commission, look at the others, they're complaining about the commission. I received so many complaints about the commission I created. I want to abolish you eh. <laughs> Sige. Ma'am, yun po, nung June 8th, uh, di ba nag-celebrate po tayo ng World Ocean Day? Tapos, ang ginawa po ng WWF, ng Ocean Org, at ng dalawang videographer and photographer na uh, dumaday po, ay nagawa po sila ng photo exhibit. Oh. Ng about, um, ang main, ano nila, ang main uh, topic nila is managing or protecting the marine protected areas, Great. yung MPA natin. O kaya po, kasama po Very yan good. sa climate change. Where was this? Uh, andi, ang nasa Soler po po siya hanggang August 7 mm. sa Soler Hotel. Pero pagkatapos po nun... Bakit sa hotel? Eh, yun po, uh, sa Soler Hotel. Dapat eh, sa mga mapupuntahan ng tao sa Luneta Park. Ma Dapat sa... Kaya po ko nag... Oo. Kaya po sa Senate, ko, dalhin nyo yung yun, exhibit yun sa Senado? Yun po yung sasabihin ko. Yes. Na, kung pwede nyo pong sponsor sure. yung exhibit sa Senate. Sure. Okay. O, at saka yung pong... Meron po Sige, para sa opening ng session, bigay po nyo. Oy, Kati, okay. Saka yan. Oh, staff. Sige po. Yun, ang, What organization is this? Uh, this is uh, uh, individual siya, si Ana Barona at saka si uh, anyway, Danny po. Ocampo. Okay. And then sponsored by WWF and Ocean Org. Nung okay. inopen nga po namin si Mark Nelson ang nag-host. Okay. Kasi siya yung national ambassador ng That's WWF. That's probably number four. Just do events for awareness. Pero more than awareness, concrete action gawin natin. Kawawa naman si climate change girl, bagong-bago na 
na ano tuloy kasi oo yeah but I have to go sige okay so thank you so much and I gave Marie a copy of the book uh, yes thank you you were good listeners